Today, the very same tools and technologies that are revolutionizing manufacturing and design are being used to push innovations in the world of film, TV, and live action. But how can additive manufacturing and digital design help creative engineers? How does it bring fantastic images and creatures to life? And how have these innovations changed the entertainment industry over the years? Find out now in Mechanical Engineering Magazine's Special Report. Stop motion is a labor-intensive process. Artists move characters by hand, shooting in tiny, small increments at a rate of 24 individual frames of action for each second of film. Portland is the home of Leica, a stop-motion film studio, which houses over 150 stages and sets. Founded in 2005, Leica has released five Oscar-nominated and award-winning films. Their first film, Coraline, based on Neil Gaiman's award-winning novella, brought the studio mainstream attention. Since then, they have released Paranorman, The Box Trolls, Kubo and the Two Strings, and Missing Link. From my perspective, one of the biggest uh, leaps forward through technology that stop motion has seen is, is the advent of 3D printing for facial animation. You know, in the past, the way that you would do facial animation would either be you would hand sculpt different replacement animations. But with the advent of, of 3D printing, you're able to produce thousands and thousands of different facial expressions that we're animating in the computer and really sort of harnessing the power and the subtlety that you can get out of computer animation and then printing out these beautiful little perfect replicas of that face. We're able to tell more sophisticated stories. We're able to have our characters go on much more emotional roller coasters. And you can see that in the performance that the animators are able to breathe in to the characters as they're animating them on set. Leica, from its foundation, has pushed the envelope of stop motion technology. Coraline was the first animated movie to film in stereoscopic 3D, a style of filming that provides the illusion of 3D depth in a movie. It requires twice the number of shots needed for a typical stop-motion picture. Their 2016 movie Kubo and the Two Strings featured one of the largest puppets created for stop-motion, a marionette skeleton with a 22-foot arm span. The characters all started out as a sketch, and then they were hand-sculpted in clay as a clay maquette. We then would either mold that object or we would scan it. So for the RP department, we would take that scan of the clay maquette and we'd start figuring out how we were gonna break up the head and turn that into a replacement face character. The puppet team would take that mold and cast of the maquette and they would start figuring out how they were gonna remake the body and how they were gonna build the armature. Leica uses additive manufacturing to create detailed features for its characters. By using 3D printing technology, Leica can add layers of character depth building a more realistic acting presence. Now, originally in Coraline, uh, they were printing with not full color models. And the designers and artists would have, um, you know, heated discussions about how many freckles Coraline should have on, on her cheeks, because every model was printed, but then hand painted. Leica uses Stratasys 3D printers to help create its puppet faces and some of the objects. Stratasys strives for high-quality 3D prints so that objects created via additive manufacturing look realistic on film. One of their latest innovations is the J55 printer, able to print objects directly in color. This allows for quick prototyping and production. What we can do is print out full-color models like this cup that are semi-transparent inside and have graphics on the outside. So it can simulate products and sort of prototypes as you move along the design process and improves the communication to stakeholders. So things like this apple that look like the real thing, uh, you can print out models that can be used in film that look like the real thing. These ones are really on the edge 
of not being distinguishable as a 3D printed part, but being a, a real model you can use in other ways. Along with additive manufacturing, computer-aided modeling is one of the tools used in most films today. CAD software is used to design parts in a digital space prior to a build within the manufacturing industry. Leica has used digital design to help perfect their characters, add background players to scenes, and enhance moving elements such as water. Now they are using digital design to build their characters in a virtual environment. In recent years, CAD has evolved significantly, allowing engineers to create parts and simulate how they will be manufactured and act in real-world environments. Advanced simulation with digital twin models of parts can tell engineers when components will fail or need servicing. The same is true for models created for film and television. Filmmakers use CAD tools to create characters, landscapes, battle sequences, and digital sets. The availability of CAD and advanced animation software has created a new boom of content, democratizing how visual entertainment is created. You know, we are living through this crazy content boom right now. If you look at the hit entire history of humanity, there hasn't been as much content being created in different forms around the globe ever. Generative design within the CAD leverages artificial intelligence and machine learning to create parts organically. Engineers can select design constraints such as load capacity and size limitations, and the AI algorithms will suggest part geometries based on the design criteria. For CAD engineers in films and TV, AI and machine learning are also helping engineers design more efficiently and faster than ever before. Artists often work frame by frame, making small adjustments. AI and machine learning can help ease repetitive tasks. For instance, seam and rig removal become less manual and labor intensive, thus freeing up the artists to dedicate their time to other tasks. The technologies used to achieve this level of innovation are the same technologies engineers use in the design and manufacturing world. The talent pool is, is growing all over the world, which is, which is great. I mean, there's a huge demand for new talent, um, and a lot of those skills transfer um, to meet entertainment. For engineers looking to explore the arts, the skills learned in the industrial design space can translate to the world of entertainment. Coming from a design world, there's a lot of concepts you can bring into the film industry that's going to make your 3D printing your process uh, a lot better going keep a lot of those techniques. Things about understanding the forces on models and how to optimize those forces to make a stronger part or how color in general works. Uh, that's all going to translate into the film industry. We have machinists that are going to be working on you know, the Mazak, you know, all day, every day. And we, we want them to be uh, precision orientated. We want them to be efficiency orientated. And then we have people that do straddle both sides, just like what Brian was saying, where we have um, somebody who may be working in Inventor one day, but may have to work in with a needle and thread the next. And so when we're looking for somebody, um, we are, I am trying to see if there is something within the approach or their, their, history that is that has a transferable skill that it's not completely specialized in and done one thing engineers are not restricted to just design and manufacturing the skills they learn can be applied to any process that requires detailed focus a logistical process and a creative spirit as technology like additive manufacturing and digital computer modeling continue to expand and cross boundaries engineers can follow and explore new opportunities.